Hello everybody, my name is Provis and welcome back to more Democracy 4 in the UK. Attempting, though so far I'm not making a lot of progress, in creating a syndicalist quote-unquote paradise. I say paradise because apparently I've upset some people in the comment section because you're like, you're not supposed to go for conservative or religious if you're syndicalist. That's not entirely true. I mean, syndicalism is an economic model, right? It's an economic model based around the collective ownership of the means of production and mostly through organized labor and unions. That's the idea. It doesn't say anything necessarily about the cultural, like, values, conservative or liberal. Now, I agree most syndicalists today would be usually young folks who would identify as extremely progressive, so they would be on the liberal side. Totally agree with that. However, we're trying to make an extra challenge by flipping the natural predisposition of the UK. Right now, it's mostly liberal. But just like it's mostly cons capitalist and I'm trying to make them socialist, we want to try to turn the liberal into conservative. I wouldn't bother with the religious if it weren't for the fact that religious are often so closely tied to the conservative demographic. Also, we picked up Beatrice Long as one of my advisors who likes religious. I've been trying mostly to make them happy for her. That said, everything I've attempted so far has been a complete and utter failure, and I'm, at this, I'm really tempted just to fire her. Beatrice has not been especially useful. I think you can fire her without any consequences after an election, so we may have to deal with her for a little bit longer. But that's the main reason I've tried dealing with the religious. I'm kind of thinking it's not working out great, though, so... I think she needs to go, and then we can ignore religious, but I still want to try to flip people over to conservative, if at all possible. Alright, so, we have seven points left. There are a few things that we could do with that probably right about now, but I'm going to save them for the next turn to have some more options. There were a lot of helpful comments in the last week's videos. Some things I learned as well. Um, oh, hello. This is actually a problem. We'll come back to that, though. Uh, some things I learned, for example, helicopter money. If we actually take a look at that down over here real quick, I have been pointing out, this seems really stinking good, and why don't we use this all the time? Where is helicopter money? There it is. A little helicopter symbol. Finding these things is always tricky for me. So this is what we looked at, and it's like, oh my god, a huge immediate boost to the GDP. This is amazing. Well, apparently there are negative events that are associated primarily in the form of inflation that can lead to hyperinflation. That's modeled into the game, and it's almost impossible to recover from. So it's risky. And as the UK, apparently, uh, this is something I got in a comment. I haven't looked it up, but I'll take your word for it. Apparently, because we have an isolated currency with the pound, it's easier to make use of helicopter money in this case. Whereas if we had, let's say, the euro or the dollar there's a good chance that we would have a lot more inflation and problems with our currency strength that would lead to more negative events. So as the UK, it's not bad if you're on the lower end, but it can lead to some really bad stuff if you're not careful, and it's particularly not necessarily great for other countries, apparently. I'll take your word. These are things I didn't know, because this is a new policy, and I, most of my forte has come in Democracy 3, which I've got to say was a much easier game than Democracy 4. So, yeah, good to know that. I had no idea. Probably will not be quick to use it for a lot of other things. All right, let's see what else is going on here. We still have not been able to get rid of the organized crime as much as I wanted to. That's great. Drug Enforcement Agency, it is reducing this. So somebody pointed out, like, the Drug Enforcement Agency is actually a problem not because of the drug enforcement, but be actually because of how it's been used to target racial minorities. I understand that. That's why I'm surprised this doesn't have any impact on racial minorities. Maybe it only has that impact if you play as the USA or something. I don't know, but I kind of expected there to be that negative event associated anyway. Uh, let's see. The hospital overcrowding still going back up. It looks like health care demand has ticked back on up. Why? Let me guess. Immigration? Yep, immigration. Okay, immigration needs to go. It's time. I'm sorry. And that means we're going to have to greatly reduce it in the form of serious restrictions. It has been causing issues with my unemployment for a long, long time. It is causing issues with my health care. It is causing issues with a lot of things. We're going to have to reduce it. Does this solve my illegal immigration problem? No, not at all. Does it lead to foreign relations issues? Yes, absolutely. But we're going to have to try it because this is just killing me. So let's go ahead and start greatly reducing our immigration, if at all possible. Uh, uncompetitive economy, it is going down, and we could probably find ways to improve it with productivity. One way I know we can improve productivity and also deal with the education issue we're now looking at is the adult education subsidies. Now, adult education is good because we're about to have a skills shortage, which basically means as the GDP has been going up, uh, we are transitioning more and more into a high-skilled service sector and specialized manufacturing economy, and people who have not kept up with that uh, with that skill set, are being left behind. Adult education subsidies encourage people to go back to school, even as adults, and retrain and learn new skills to meet those for the sake of the market so we can all progress. That's a good thing. It also increases education, which is good to deal with the skill shortage, and productivity is good for the uncompetitive economy. So we're going to give this one a shot, and I think we max it out. It's not outrageously expensive for what you get. It's just generally a good thing. So we're going to try for that next. 
Another thing that people were recommending that could be very good to deal with things of the uncompetitive economy is the import tariffs. Totally understood that this is good in that sense. I'm not a big fan of it because it has a lot of other nasty downsides. For example, international trade goes down, foreign relations goes down. This is a good way to lead toward, let's say, cyber warfare and other nasty foreign policy-based events. Now, granted, our foreign aid's pretty high, so that should offset it a bit. But still, it does reduce uncompetitive economy by basically creating protectionist measures so it's more expensive to buy from everyone else in order to force people to buy locally and improve our economic situation at home. Can be good in that sense. Basically, we actually sidestep the fact that we're uncompetitive by making everyone else more expensive. Um, we could do this. At least in the short term, it would have an effect. We may want to reduce it or get rid of it entirely later. But at least temporarily, it could be good. One thing I'm very scared of is the gig economy. The gig economy, I have yet to figure out a good way to get rid of in Democracy 4. It's unbelievably entrenched once you get your GDP very high and your technology very high, which is what we have done up to this point. By the way, how's the environment looking? It's going back down. GDP maxed out. Yeah, this is going to be a problem. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I've never figured out a way to get rid of it. The only thing I know that affects it is labor laws. And we're going to need to increase this in order to, one, get more trade unionists, but also more socialism, and also just try to offset the gig economy before it becomes a problem. But, like, this is an issue. And the problem with increasing labor laws is it's going to affect the working weak and our productivity, which is bad for the uncompetitive economy. So maybe if we do labor laws and the tariffs both, we would be able to actually do something. Maybe? It's the only thing I can think of that actually would solve the problem and prevent the gig economy from entrenching itself. Because once it's there, I don't know how to get rid of it. Maybe. Uh, we have a housing expansion crisis. There is a shortage of homes in the country. We can relax planning laws, or we can keep the planning restrictions. I think keeping the restrictions makes farmers and environmentalists very happy, but slightly upsets capitalists, whereas it's the opposite. In this case, I'm fine with going ahead and upsetting the capitalists. That's a huge boost for the environmentalists and the farmers. Okay. Let's save our points and save those for the import tariffs and the labor laws restrictions. I think we're going to have to. Be it just as long as threatening to quit. She wants a married tax allowance. Well, we could do that. The only problem is it's very expensive. Um, liberalism goes down, which is actually good. Like, this is something I actually would benefit from. It's just very expensive in terms of political capital. Liberalism membership going down is good for me. If I'm trying to go for a conservative playthrough. So this is something I have to get already. But it's too expensive right now. We have another... Oh, there's the gig economy. Dear God, look how narrow that start and stop trigger are, by the way. Like, if you don't deal with this quickly, it just... its it, it, Oh, gosh. It just comes out of nowhere. And it's because uh, the technology and the GDP is what it is. Now, unemployment is a little high. Let's see. It doesn't tell me yet if this is increasing the gig economy because unemployment is low or because it's too high. Like, fixing unemployment, will that deal with the gig economy? Probably. I mean, people shouldn't feel a need to go get jobs, right? But maybe? I don't know. Airport expansion. Ooh, we have three options here. Planning and permission has been requested for the expansion of some of our country's largest airports. Not enough capacity for the number of flights we want to land. We can increase tourism and our GDP. However, I don't need to increase my GDP. We can reject the plans, which is good for the environment, but likely will hurt the GDP. I'm going to reject it. It's going to reduce tourism, make uh, environmentalists happy, capitalists unhappy. It actually didn't do anything to the GDP directly. It has a small trickle-down effect from the tourism. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm not really worried about GDP just because, like, right now it's already max. Like, losing GDP doesn't hurt me right now. It's already going to be going above the maximum. Gig economy is already terrible. Like, making this... Yeah, we, we need to find ways to reduce this, if anything. And where money is no issue either. Like, there's actually disadvantages to being a maxed-out GDP. There's something to be said about saying, you know what? We're making plenty of money. Let's bring the GDP back down to, like, 80%. Let's sabotage ourselves. You know? And we could do that. I just... I, I really would rather not. All right. So, let's see. Import tariffs. Who said we're going to do this? Let's go for it. Uncompetitive economy does get hit pretty hard. This can increase your economy, but not by a ton. If we go for at least a bit here, I'm not going to go to the next threshold because I want to be able to relieve this quickly. So we're going to go for this. And then I will probably have to take it down a couple of notches after the uncompetitive economy is gone. But this should be an almost instantaneous effect of about 30%, which is huge. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to have to go to our labor laws, which are in here somewhere. Uh, there's so many symbols to look at these days. Oh, wait, no, it's this one right here. Okay. Labor laws. We're going to increase this. How much does it do? I don't know. It doesn't say how much this affects gig economy, but we're going to try. 
Wages will go up. Membership in groups I care about goes up. Working week goes down. Apply the changes. It's the only thing I can do. And that leaves me with only two political capital left. Oh my god, okay. This I, I hate gig economy. I hate it. It's so hard. It's not bad if you're playing, like, let's say what we did as the U.S., which, by the way, had an innate increase uh, by as being American for the gig economy. Like, it was impossible to get rid of as an American. But if you're not playing as trade unionist, it's not that big of a deal. If you are playing as trade unionist, it's horrible. By the way, it hasn't fired yet. That's a good sign. National sports team gagged by a foreign power. Uh-oh. Okay, when sports are a business, athletes need to check their contracts before speaking their mind. A groveling apology was issued to a foreign superpower who took exception to support being voiced by a protest movement in their country. Ah, this sounds like a certain thing that was going on with China and whatnot. Okay, fun. Yeah, no, fun, fun. Okay, so that hurts right before an election. That hurts really bad, but what can I do? All right, so looking at 51% of the vote. That's pretty good. Ida Ross, good. What's the uncompetitive economy looking like now? Okay, it's going down by a lot. Import tariffs, it said zero. I thought that it was going to take effect immediately, but apparently not. All right, well, we'll let this do its thing for a while. It's going to go down. This should drop seriously. Labor laws, we can increase even further if we so desire. And at this point, I don't mind that I'm losing a tiny bit of productivity because we're already using the uh, import tariffs to get rid of uncompetitive. All we have to do is cross that stop trigger and we're fine. So we could go for another boost in this just to try and prevent the gig economy from taking place. Um, and that might be the right call, maybe? Let me see what else I want to do. So 19 points to work with at the moment. How is immigration and stuff looking? Um, immigration is dropping at least a bit. It's not a lot. It's increasing racial tension by a ton, by the way. You know, allowing for more racial tension to take place would also deal with some of the immigration, ironically enough. Um, where's that Race Discrimination Act go that we wanted to get rid of? Or at least reduce. That's causing so much liberalism. We could reduce this. It costs a lot of points, but we could reduce it. By a ton. Yep. Yeah. The thing is, even on zero, ethnic minorities like it a bit. This does increase racial tension. But it gets rid of, potentially, up to 10% of the population is liberals. <laughs> kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Um... I'm gonna have to try for it. I hate doing it, but we're gonna have to try. Like, this goes against my own personal ideology, alright? Like, I'm not happy about any of these things that I'm doing right now, but I think it has to be done. Socialism membership, we'd love to increase as well. All these private industries are what's causing this. So, private industries, uh, somebody had a good comment about some of this stuff. Um, let's take a quick look at some of these down over here. Was it under economy? Do you have any state options I can look at? Transportation? No, not at the moment. Alright, well, whatever. Um, if take a look at, say, state telecoms. Somebody made a good point, a good reminder to me, that this is sort of assuming uh, all these little effects right here, that you're going to be at like at least 50% and up kind of a thing, as far as these arrows. So what happens apparently with state companies uh, is if we're on the low end, it's going to, let's say, let's say the water shor uh, shortage. Where's the water? Where's the state water company? I'll probably be under public services if I had to guess. Yeah. So we have seen, by trying to pass this sort of thing in the past, that on the low end, the state water company actually makes things like a water shortage worse, not better. But that's because uh, the arrow here would have said that it would go that it would improve the water shortage, and that's because it's assuming 50% or higher. On the high end, it actually does get rid of the water shortage. Sorry, not a green arrow, a red arrow because it's going down. The good thing, you know what I mean. On the high end, it is good. It does reduce the water shortage. On the low end, it makes it worse. And that's because we actually would be nationalizing the entire uh, water industry in the country. And at that point, once it's owned by the state and you've nationalized it, if you're not funding it well, well, of course the water's getting worse. But my point is, sometimes these arrows are going to be inverting themselves depending on whether you're on the low or the high end, right? So it looks like it's good. Let's say that trade unit's membership goes up if we are on the high end. But on the low end, it actually flips and this would be a red arrow. Like, sometimes it's a bit confusing. Just be wary of things inverting on you depending on how much you choose to fund it. I don't know if I made any sense in what I just said. But whatever, we'll go with it. Uh, let's see, what else we got going on over here? Um... We could try buying some people's votes. Those are things that we could do. Um, Cyberbullying awareness and so on. It's relatively cheap. We can do this. I'm not sure it does me any particularly good right now, but you know, it's a thing we could do. I don't want more liberalism membership. That doesn't do me a lick of good. Trade po council. You know what? Let's do the trade council to try and offset some of the damage we are going to be doing with those import tariffs. Just a little bit. I don't know if it's enough. It definitely is not, but it helps a little bit. Labor Day. We're going to go ahead and do this. I was just talking about how we can reduce the GDP without much impact. This greatly increases socialism membership. And if we're already maxed out on GDP, we don't care. In fact, reducing GDP is fine. So we're going to do this. All right, let's move on to the next turn. Trying to increase 
that socialism and trade union membership. I'm trying. Attend an LGBT play. Well, this is going to upset the conservatives, isn't it? A very well-received and popular play is currently on our country's finest theater. The director has invited you to attend a performance. That should not be an issue. But the play is a commentary on society's attitude to those in the LGBT community. Attending the play will be shown as strong sympathy. We could attend it and make liberals happy. Or we could decline and make conservatives happy. The thing is, liberalism makes up enough population that this is the right decision. But I'm going to decline... Oh, religious are happy by this. Oh, crap. That's not even helpful to me even then, because religious is like 10% of the population. So this is just straight out hurting myself. I just hamstringed myself a little bit by that. That's not great. But, oh well, I was trying. Um, immigration, how we doing? It is going down. Immigration rules are taking effect. But gosh, they're completely overshadowed by how good everything else is. Ah! Ah! This is terrible. All right, racial tension's going up. Well... Maybe that'll make things better in some ways. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uncompetitive economy. How we doing? We are ticking down quite a bit. All right. The import tariffs are taking their effect. We're going to reduce those as soon as that's dealt with. Gig economy has not threatened to come back yet. Illegal immigration is not going to go away anytime soon. Organized crime is still not going away. We can't do much more there. Intelligence we can max out. It doesn't do me a whole load of good, but it is a thing we could do. I'm, I'm sick of this being an issue. Um, gambling. We need to reduce this entirely. Yeah, we're going to get rid of gambling. Actually, what if I just cancel the policy entirely? How much does that cost? Cancel is 12 versus lowering for 6. Yeah, just going down to 0 doesn't hurt me. I think you get like a teensy bit of remaining capitalism, but like everything else goes down to 0. So we're paying nothing except we have a policy that's useless and gets me to keep 1% approval from capitalism. All right, whatever. And it's cheaper. It's the right thing to do. Eight points. Sorry, not six. Okay, uh, that works. What else do we want to do? Let's see. Um, yeah, ethnic minorities are going to be very upset, and they're a pretty large demographic right now. I'm, I'm actively hurting my opportunities in this election. We have an election on the way. We need to go and do things like manifestos and stuff. We could cut the income tax. No. Raise human development. Well, if I can get wages up, that's doable. So maybe we make that pledge. Sure, everyone likes that promise. We have to do it. If we don't, bad things happen. Um, gender equality. Mm, probably can't promise that. I'm not going to cut this. I promise to cut import tariffs next term. Yes, I do plan on doing that. Prisons. Yes, I do plan on raising that. Those are generally good. Alcohol law. No. Equality. Equality is the sort of thing you'd think that I'm going to raise. We'd have to get this up to like almost 100%, though. I'm not sure that's worth doing. What about... Speeches? No. Fundraising? Fundraising is not looking good. I am not making much in the way of money. The actually the National Technocrats Party is what's doing good. We could go for a media stunt. 80% chance of success here. All right, we're going to go ahead and launch that. Try to make myself look stronger. Trustworthy? Can't afford any more because we're out of points. Oh, gosh dang it. Unless there's some cheap ones down here I'm not seeing. No, there are more options, but nothing great for me. Okay, we have what? One point left? Two points left? Okay. That doesn't leave me a lot of options then. So yeah, you can see here we'd have to reduce it down to here in order to fulfill my promise. And we do want to fulfill promises. Like, that's a good thing as an elected official. We need to do that. Uh, beyond that, though, um, let's see, what's this? Gender Discrimination Act. This would increase liberalism. See, this is why I didn't want to increase gender... I didn't want to promise gender equality because that works against what I'm saying. Liberalism's absolutely the right way to go in this playthrough, especially as the UK. Like, I'm, I'm actively making my life harder. By not doing so. It's intended to be a challenge, alright? Art subsidies. We're subsidizing the arts? Ridiculous. We could have puppet shows. That actually reduces liberalism. It's so stupid. <laughs> uh, no. That doesn't, that doesn't do me a whole lot of good. Um, I could reduce income taxes. I mean, that would be helpful in some ways. Any other taxes we could reduce? Payroll tax. We could reduce that a little bit. Increase wages directly. It does help with things like the uh, uncompetitive economy a smidge. I think we just need to save our points for next turn, to be honest. We probably should just go into the election. All right, here's hoping that we are going to win at least enough for us to put together a government in Parliament. It's closer than I would like it to be, but it looks like we are going to win. Yep, yep, yep. The uh, National Technocrats have a pretty massive activist boost, and that's because they're winning the demographics that I would be going for if I were playing intelligently. I think they're going for things like uh, socialism and, well, let's see, hang on, socialist, yeah, we kind of split the vote. I actually did all right on socialism compared to them, but they got a pretty big amount. They're winning the youth vote, the middle income vote, because I raise taxes and people don't like that. We are splitting the union vote, they're winning the wealthy, 
Surprisingly, they're doing well with the environmentalists. Basically, every group that doesn't like me that wants a referendum on me is voting for them. So that's not great. Changes, though, we can see what's happened. Apparently, the biggest change in the UK is that everyone is eating more vegetables. Well, that's good, I suppose. Lifespan has drastically increased by 43%. Yikes. Health went up, crime went down, GDP went up. Lots of good things, except for the illegal immigration. But that's so hard to get rid of. Foreign investment went up. That's good. Food prices, oil prices, human development. Yeah, lots of good stuff went up for us. Vote analysis, we overall did pretty well here. Okay, well, um, this isn't the best, but it was enough to get me 29% of the vote. A lot of people just straight out chose not to vote. So, I got 29% of the population, but out of the actual vote itself, those who did vote, I got 54%, which is a clear majority, so I easily win this. We are going to get rid of Beatrice Long. She has been a thorn in my side for far too long. Let's reshuffle that cabinet and hire somebody new. Somebody who wants foreign policy. Motor liberal. Now... Poor liberal. Now! Gosh, we, we should have gone liberal in this playthrough. We really should have. It would have made my life so much easier. Conservatives and commuter? Uh, maybe. Parents and motorists? Well, I mean, maybe. Motorists? No. We're, we're going to end up going down the commuter route. Alright, we're going to go ahead and hire Georgia Hayes. I'm not thrilled about it, but at least this means I'm going to get a little bit more political capital coming in per turn. Good. Multinational tax evasion. What? Oh my god. Okay, tech has gone up. Corporation taxes and sales taxes are so high that companies are looking to route their taxes through other companies, uh, sorry, countries, in order to avoid paying taxes. So as technology continues to go up, this is likely to happen, which basically means I think my only option is going to be reducing sales tax at least a bit, which is okay. We don't need all this money anyway. This improves equality. It means that people are going to feel like I'm not taxing the ever-loving bejesus out of them, so it's better. Like, this is good. We should do this at least a bit. We'll reduce it down to, like, 3 billion or something. 21% uh, taxes instead of 25. So a 4% tax reduction for all of you. Hopefully that ends up being enough to actually offset that damage a little bit. Royal scandals! Oh, God. A prominent member of the royal family has been accused of spending a suspicious amount of time with a convicted sex offender, despite that individual's sordid history being well known. This is being described at best, poor judgment, and at worst, deeply suspicious. Support the monarch? I think this makes conservatives happy versus criticizing. We're going to support. Patriots and conservatives like it. Liberals hate it. Liberals are the largest voter demographic. That's no good. That's really, really, really no good at all. Okay. Well, hmm. <clears throat> well, hmm. We did say we we're going to raise up prisons. That's a thing we can do real quick. I might as well just max this out, truth be told, though. It's just generally good. State employees go up. That's a group that I want to make happy. Conservatives like it. Liberals happen like it. Everything good happens out of this. So we're going to go ahead and max out some state-of-the-art prison technology. There we go. Um, all right. How's that uncompetitive economy looking? Almost gone. Very soon, we will be able to fulfill our promise to reduce the import tariffs. Goody. Labor laws? I'm going to go ahead and increase these a little bit more. Just a bit. Um, this is actually a lot. Hmm. Hmm. Let me actually double check this. Working week? What happens? Productivity will go down if we do this. Foreign investment, I think, will go down a little bit. Health will go up. Trading units will be happier. I think it is okay for me to raise this up. The working week shouldn't hurt me too much. Wages will go up, which is good for the human development index. And groups I care about start becoming more pro prominent. So we're going to start working our way slowly but surely toward very pro-labor labor laws. Which makes sense, I think, for this playthrough. Also, we're still successfully staving off the gig economy. And the reason the gig economy matters, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the reason the gig economy matters is not just because it has impacts on unemployment and on your economy and so on. That, that you can live with. The biggest issue with the gig economy is it reduces the happiness of your trade units by like 30% or something ridiculous. It's huge. And it is so hard to get rid of. And since that's the group I want to become my primary membership, like we have to deal with that. By the way, I also have to figure out how we're going to deal with all these state industries if we're going to make this work in order to get their membership up. We have to find a way to do this. We have to. They're very expensive, though. And, and they increase your corruption by a lot. So we're going to have to figure out how to deal with corruption. I think the best way to deal with corruption is with a lot of different law and orders uh, policies, but we'll have to come back to that probably in the next video. So this went okay. We've made progress with the groups that I care about. We're making progress on some of the stats that I care about. But we're not making a lot of progress in others. Oh, good. Organized crime's about to go away. Finally. God. Okay. So, yeah. Some progress being made. It's not enough. But it's something. 
Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.